So like these loyalty point changes are really freaking awesome, guys. Like let's let's just kind of let's just kind of go over go over this, right? Let's let's take a, let's take a look at what they're laying down, man. Look at this. So non full up release promos will now cost 60 LP each at launch of a new set. When the following set launches, they cost 45. So this is kind of their whole model now: is they cost more when they come out, less afterwards, right? Same thing for plus ultra promos, 60 and then 45. Same thing for provisional showdown promos, 80 and then 50. So a little more heavy handed on these, right? But it makes sense because look at this. The participation point changes. Players earn 10 from playing in a casual tier event. You used to earn, I'm sorry. Players earn 10 from playing in a casual tier event. 50 from an LGS tier event. This is crazy, guys. This is your locals. You earn 50 points now just from playing in locals. That's crazy. That that is that is insane. Even at 60 each, like that's crazy. In in a, in a couple months, you can just get like a few places of everything you need. Play in a provisional, get 100. Play in a regional, 200. Nationals, 300. You are collecting promos like crazy. Like like one provisional, one regional, boom. You're a couple locals, boom. You're stacked for a few play sets of things right then and there. It is just that easy now. Um, they also did away with bonusing, with 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 bonus LP for winning rounds. That's fine. That's fine. Don't don't make people more conflicted on staying in an event or not. If they're not doing well, let them drop. Let them go play the other side of it and get even more stuff. Right? Let them get even more prizing. Super fine. And if you drop, you're forfeiting your participation, which again, super fine, super fine. The legality changes. So this is the the big thing now, right? The big thing now, right? Is purely trolls are legal two weeks after, plus ultras are two weeks after, provisionals are until the next season. So this is this is kind of wild. These make a lot of sense. In two weeks, you will get enough pre-release promos. Enough locals will happen where all of these will be well within the circulation. This is super fine. Now this though, this is crazy. Until the end of the season, this is extremely heavy-handed. This is very, very, very heavy-handed. But also, I understand the intensity of the response because things for these provisional promos have been really bad lately. A lot of people are upset. And rightfully so because we have people who are going to play the first provisional in person at origins now they're the only ones with these promos and they are just running train because no one else has stadiums no one else has childhood friends right stuff like that so this this heavy handed of a change i understand i suspect that as provisionals get closer and closer to the smaller scale events they wanted we're gonna see this be a little a little more leeway right End of the season will become halfway through the season. We'll become a month through the season. We'll become two weeks after like these, right? Because right now, there being a difference between these two makes a lot of sense. These are way harder to get than just showing up out of your locals and collecting these, right? These are a much bigger deal, especially as there's less and less online provisionals. So for now, I like this change. I think it could have been a little less heavy handed but I understand putting the bigger band-aid on rather than the small because things have been pretty bad before this. So I understand it and I'm glad that they're doing this. It gives them a lot more leeway to, to, not, to not be pressured to change the provisional logistics as fast and to make sure they take the time to get them right as they try and roll out more and more over time. I imagine going into season four next year, probably, right? Things are going to be a lot different. I think things are going to be a lot different. So, um, and then of course, the ch these changes also are just very nice quality of life stuff. Everything is um, going to be legal to to redeem the day the set drops or the day the season begins. Even though they're not legal for a while, this is still really great. Get your cards as fast as possible. And of course, the shipping has been a lot better lately. So you are going to have it as fast as possible. No more waiting, you know, weeks months for your redemption orders things are just a lot easier now so all in all really great changes let us know guys jasco these are fantastic changes i mean just look at the comments section 
Like, everyone's a lot happier about what's going on now. Super duper happy about, about, about what's going on now. It's so much easier to get cardboard in your hands now. And the logistics and playability of the cardboard makes a lot more sense. Love these changes. Can't wait to not play in Season 3 at all because I only commentate this game. <laughs> um, so... Next, I kind of, well, I mean, we can just stop and look at these. God, these are so beautiful. I'm going to buy a billion of all of these at Gen Con. I, I want all of these mats so bad. I want, I, I, I want the entire freaking table, right? I want the whole table to just be a collage of Gen Con mats. I want that so freaking bad, man. I want it so bad, man. God, these promos are so beautiful. They're so beautiful. I need like 12 of these. I need a hundred frickin' million meteor showers, man. So frickin' gorgeous. Hey you! You like the My Hero Academia collectible card game, right? If the answer is at least a resounding probably, you should head right on over to unfunstuff.com for all of your MHA CCG purchasing needs. We've got the new set Heroes Clash on pre-order as well as the new DLC 2 in stock. And if you want to use coupon code Wealthy Aspirations, you can get 5% off your entire freaking order and also support old Levi a little bit along the way. The link for all this is going to be right down in the description below. So get on over there and go yourself some amazing product from some amazing people. Back to the video. So, so gorgeous. What do you guys think of these? I'm not gonna lie, I think this set is is kind of an L. I am not very, very happy with, with this collection. Jiro looks amazing and a very relevant character. Love this. Love this. Um, I, I think this art is beautiful, and this is a character that is played all over the place. Very good choice. After that, it's where they get a little sus. Slashing Whirlwind is fine. I guess, like, it... I don't know. This card is just not very heavily played, right? Like, Detroit Smash, also not very heavily played. But it's Detroit Smash, right? It's like the collector card of collector's cards, right? Now, for Jude Heatwave, on the other hand, very, very heavily played card. And also a very beautiful card. And it's Todoroki, very popular character, checking all of the boxes there. Slashing Whirlwind, I'm not sure if it checks all the boxes. Stain, Stain's a pretty popular character. He is the villain of Season 2. He is, you know, the poster boy of Set 2. Okay, sure, 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 I'm into it. Right, but this card, it's just not, it's not a heavily played card. It's not going to be all over the place. Like, it's just... I don't know. It's just not like a super like famous card within the game, and I feel like there's maybe a better choice they could make. But I get that if they wanted to do a stain attack, this was kind of the only option. I don't know. I got to reveal this card, so like obviously I like it. But I think in the grand scheme of things, I don't know. It's not my favorite choice, but I understand it. <sighs> Cheerleader! I mean, this card is fine I don't know this this card is like fine it looks really good don't get me wrong it looks great looks fantastic and it is, it is a solid card all around so I think it's like okay I don't really like that it's like a Hagakure only card for half of it um all, on it on a reach like it's a it's a great card like for Hagakure but for only for Hagakure so like as a as a person getting my regional promos, what value is this going to hold, and what like play is it going to see only in Hagakure, right? The top the top ability is quite good though. I won't lie, it's gonna it's gonna be in sideboards for sure. But I'm not a huge fan of it being like a character restricted card inside a, a you know super duper high value high end uh, regional promos. So that's my only hang up. That's my only hang up about the card, and I feel the same way about Ojiro's card, but even more because like this is literally th this does nothing for anyone but whatever the heck ojiro 2 does right which is why i don't like this like even if Ho ojiro 2 is like cream of the crop this is a regional promo card that only exists for that character and that is super duper lame i'm not a big fan of that choice at all um I've been saying that I really want them to use, like, 
insert name of character only abilities on cards a lot more. I think it's a really underused design space. But man, not for cards you're going to make regional promos. Not, not a big fan of that. Not a big fan of that. This one at least has another ability that's going to make it see play in a lot of decks. But this is like literally, literally Ojiro only. So like, super duper strange. This one, fantastic. Best one in the set. This card is everywhere. Hard staple on like all of its symbols. This card's cracked out of its mind. It's popped the character and the art is beautiful. 10 out of 10. It is like the one 10 out of 10 on this kit. And it's an explosive release. This is fine. Like this card sees some play. I don't know that we needed like another Bakugo one. I don't know. It's weird because it's like, maybe they're just running out of like stock art to use because like, look at this. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is, guys. I got a copy early. Um, like, this is very stock art. Um, art asset that they're using, which is super fine. Um, it just, I don't know. A second Bakugo one. The art is decent. The card is decent. It's like, it's like very okay. God, this card is beautiful. But why wasn't it quick create? Why wasn't it quick create? This card looks so freaking good, but I don't understand why it wasn't quick create. Cause this is a, this is a card like, okay, let's be generous here. This is a card for weapon only decks. And I, and I don't even think that a lot of the weapon decks that aren't Momo play it, but let's be generous. It's a card for weapon only decks. Again, more exclusivity on these, which I don't like. And it's on a pack that's already filled with exclusive exclusivity. This is practically only a Momo card. If you want to make it a stretch, it's a weapon only card, which I just really don't like. Whereas if you make a quick create, quick create can be in literally everything. Quick create can go in everything. Any any deck on those symbols can play can play quick create. It is a very 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 good generic card, right? So And then this is just terrible. The, the this is this is just so bad. This card is like unplayable. Present Mike doesn't even play this card. Don't get me wrong. It looks fantastic. Beautiful art, but like I don't think there's that that many present Mike fans out there. There's definitely some, and they're gonna want this, but it's not gonna be enough for this to warrant being like not to to make it warrant not being a five dollar card. Not a fan of this choice at all. And then of course the Contender Rowan looks nice as well. I do like that the blood slashes and splashes on these is a lot more apparent as opposed to the other one. Like you see a lot more on this one and you can really see it on the Contender one. Overall, a couple bangers, but overall this is a very meh pack. I don't think many of these are gonna be very expensive and I think it's really gonna hurt the value of uh, the prizing for going to these events, which I'm not a big fan of. Overall, it's, a, it, it's, it's an okay set depending on who you are. And that's what I kind of don't like about it overall. It's very dependent on who you are. Drizzle, you're super welcome for this stream, man. Thanks for hanging out for so long. It's getting really, really, really late. So I probably should pack it up soon. Um, but good luck dispensing some uh, some justice, man, tomorrow after a good night's sleep. Now these cards, what I really want to talk about. Now, forewarning, none of these are problematic anymore. Because these are not legal until the end of the season. So... We're super good on that front now. Um, they're gonna be well in rotation by the time that they are legal. But man, guys, these cards are, these cards are nuts. This might be the nuttiest provisional pack yet. All my five. This guy is crazy. This guy is so nuts, dude. This works when you block with smashes. That's freaking crazy. This guy is effectively like a tin hander if you leverage your cards perfectly and then just like flipping for plus two on all your spams on the good symbol. You build a million foundations, you flip them all for speed or damage and then you have like a extremely relevant deadlock. I think this character's nuts. I think this guy's gonna be everywhere. I think this card is freaking crazy strong. I love this all my... This is this this gives All Might 3 a run for his money. I will say All Might 3 builds a lot better. This guy doesn't build nearly as well. Because you need to be playing your attacks to get your card draw. But man, his late game potential. His late game potential and, and the flexibility of his stats not being reliant on, on the opponent's cards. Strong. Very strong character. This card is nuts. 
This card in Tokoyami and Ochako 2 is going to be insane. And also fourth kind. Uh, like those are very three three very meta relevant decks that this card is crazy in all of them. This ability man, when they mill those attacks and fourth kind makes it like an eight mid for nine with powerful three. When Ochako 2 mills an attack and makes it a 10 mid for five, pick it back up, do it again. When Tokoyami mills the attack and makes it a, a, a 9, 10, 11 mid for 8 freaking billion because it's Tokoyami, dude, oh my god, man. Crazy. And you get to destroy stuff when it hits them, like, this card's nuts. This card's really strong. This card's going to see a lot of very relevant meta play. The Menace. Oh my god, dude. The Menace. So... <laughs> There's a lot of band discussion on this character. I don't know if it's that bad. This character is really, 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 really powerful. I don't know if she's game-breaking in her own right, but I think she's very, very powerful. She is A tier for sure. She is very, very, very good for sure, right? But I think my, my, my only issue with her from a balance perspective is that I think it's going to become a very feasible strategy for... A lot of these symbol decks to in the event they play a longer game one like say it's like 20 30 minutes they play a fairly long game one which is very natural for these symbols it is going to be very very easy to simply side into this character and play to survive and you're never going to kill anyone but just play to survive play play to survive however amount of time is remaining in the round and then you just win the round because you won game one. I think that might become a very toxic strategy that a lot of players are going to implement. And like, no shame on the players. Play, play to your outs, right? Don't slow play, but like, I think even playing at a natural pace, this character is just gonna take eight million years to kill, especially if you're not playing to win. You're just playing to not die. I'm very concerned for how gameplay of this character is going to break out in those aspects but we'll see you know i'm not uh crying wolf just yet right um gigantic explosion this is also i think a card that's going to see a ton of play uh in ochako 2 i think this card is crazy in ochako 2 this card is crazy in all of those like howitzer impact cyclone earth builds um the, the, these words are just nuts this this reads like a standard card i'm gonna be honest this reads like a standard card um, this is so many things going on in, in a complex ability, and oh my goodness, man. And then this deadlock is crazy. Um, a rel another relevant deadlock on the Earth symbol is really, really, really good. Um, yeah, I think this card is just very, 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 very powerful. Uh, it's going to be so big, and any character that can make it, like, really fast... Oh my god, like, Bakugo 2! Like, oh my god, man. <laughs> this, this card's freaking awesome. This card is really cool. Living up to his example. So first of all, it is an infinity symbol, one mid, well, I'm sorry, one low block with breaker one, which is like really strong. And then just this, this ability is gonna be really wild on a lot of characters. Infinity symbols, so like, hey, anyone playing the extra powerful stuff? Crazy, man. Put this, you can put this in All Might 1, you can put this in Eda 3, you know? You can put this in Bakugo 2, like, just to name a few examples, this is a really powerful action card. And like, it replaces itself most of the time. Right? I, 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 love, I think this card's a lot. This card's very, very cool. I like it a lot. Villainous Waylay? Man, this card is really scary. Like, Void, man. Void having this card is nuts. I think Void Sero is going to be so strong with this card, man. You're going to play a million two checks, but, but screw it, right? We're all in, man. Like, oh my god. This card absolutely deserves its two check. The free discard or the free hand reveal is so nuts. And it's a low block. It's a good low block. It's only a four diff. Love this card. I think this card is really, 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 really cool design space, man. Photogenic Hero. Nice nice to meet your ass acquaintance. Um, and this is just like straight up a Mount Lady card. Um, I think it's weird for it to be in here, especially since she's not even a provisional character. But hey, it's cool that it's in here and I'm... Praying for all of the souls that are going to have to hunt down four of these. Um, especially if they want the foil ones, which... Let's be real. You're a Mount Lady player. 
you're very dedicated to Mount Lady, you want the four foil ones. So you're going to have a treasure hunt getting the four foil ones um, outside of Redemption. Um, yeah, this is an insanely strong promo pack. I'm so glad that the hangups of provisionals being hard to get is not a thing anymore because, oh my god, these cards are all so powerful and so relevant, and I think you're going to see a ton of them everywhere. A plus promo pack. 